Wit Siasoko. I'm an artist here in Richfield, and I've been working with the Cornerstone Group on the Richfield Artist Resident Engagement. Um, RARE is an artist residency initiative in partnership with the Cornerstone Group, a progressive real estate developer that solves community challenges through innovation and collaboration to increase access to art experiences. This residency that I'm a part of is designed to cross boundaries and disciplines and invite Richfield residents to participate in building a more vibrant future here in Richfield. The support for this project is given um, by the Arts Access Grant from the Minnesota State Arts Board and administered by Forecast Public Art. I'm really excited today we have Takumba Aiken here um, who's an artist that has been working um, with art and community for over three decades? Four, 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 four decades. decades? Four decades! <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'm going to read his bio here and hopefully it does him justice. Um, Takumba, <laughs> Takumba Aiken is a Twin Cities artist, arts administrator, educator, and community activist who focuses on public art and collaborative projects. His rhythm paintings on paper and canvas are loose and lively. He has participated in the creation of over 300 murals and public art sculptures with themes ranging from local history to the artist's own style of rhythmic pattern and spirit writing. The artist has served on the boards of the Minneapolis Arts Commission, the African American Cultural Arts Center, Public Forecast Public Art, and the St. Paul Arts Collective, and has acted as an advisor on the arts for both the city of St. Paul and the city of Minneapolis. Also, you're on the board of the Minneapolis College of Art and Design. Okay, and he has been the recipient of awards including a Paula Krasnick Foundation Fellowship and a Bush Foundation Visual Arts Fellowship. His work can be found in public and private collections including those of the Walker Art Center, General Mills, Herbie Hancock, Taj Mahal, and Maya Angelou. And that's Taj Mahal, the musician. Not, you know, <laughs> the not, not the palace. Not yet. You know, well, not in Taj Mahal, but somewhere near. I like to start my thing out by saying uh, this one phrase that I love. Oh, it's, it's, uh, it was done by the Here Comes the Judge and uh, it's the Red Fox show. Um, uh, I stand before you to sit behind you to tell you something I know nothing about. Now we can start. I'm really happy you could you could come down. I've got to know you over the last couple of years, and I really appreciate what you bring to the arts community and what you've done for the Twin Cities art scene. And I know you've worked in communities a lot, especially with art as a tool for engaging communities. And I mean, I I, I guess I just wanted to start off with like what your what you feel an artist's role is in in community, and maybe what place art has in community and. What are your thoughts on that? Well, you know, I, I always say art is the heart of the community. You can't spell heart without the word art in it. In many communities, if you deal with indigenous cultures, there was never a word called art. It was That was a role of one of the many roles that would have to be done in a community, mm -hmm. mainly to uh, be informative of things that have happened in the past, things that are coming, and, uh, and about... Uh, uplifting spirits or if it's beyond the visual arts and into the performing arts which I consider also part of public art then you have the people that dance to heal or to tell a story or to bring a couple together with the whole community mm -hmm. as a marriage instead of you, you run off somewhere and then da 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 you know uh, or to separate people or to let people know that mm -hmm. it's time to go to war or it's time to chill out mm -hmm. you know and uh, but my goal in, in doing public art, the first, firstly, there was no such thing as public art when I started. Hmm. It was dual mural yeah. on a wall. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm a descendant of uh, the the late '60s and the '70s. The wall of respect. I knew those things were happening in Chicago. I moved from Evanston outside of Chicago to here. Mm -hmm. Got with a group called Wall Painting Artists. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which was <laughs> WPA, mm -hmm. you know, and that came right after a thing called City Arts, mm -hmm. which they had hired the city. The city had hired uh, an army of artists mm -hmm. that had uh, directors and different kinds of things, murals, painting, uh, dance, uh, uh, poetry, mm -hmm. um, sculpture, and actually, that's where I met Jack Becker. That's where I met Marilyn Lindstrom, say, too. Mm -hmm. All these people were doing that. And then when that, that was like a um, pilot city, no, not pilot city. Yeah, pilot city program. 
-hmm. a model city program. Okay. What era? Uh, this would have been the 70s. Okay. And so it was like trying to make sure that some of the things that were going on were recognized because of the riots and the civil rights movement. But beyond that, because it was affecting all people, if you could get uh, community leaders that were not only political, but, you know, dealt with the arts and, you know, it might have been something that was created to calm people down, but it actually works the opposite way. Because <laughs> yeah. it brings the people to the forefront that, uh, can say, well, you know, if you don't want to protest this, you can paint it on a wall and everybody will see it and they won't forget it, you know. Was there any censorship at the time with what course, you guys were painting? Of course, but people don't know how to read things. Like if you look at the back of the Kmart, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that was uh -huh. one okay. of the, we, that was one of the last things that wall painting artists did. Who is that artist? Uh, Roger Nelson. Nelson. Oh, that's one of my favorites. You, you know, know, they're, they're going to you know, remove, yeah. remove the Kmart. So I, yeah. Yeah, I wonder if how that's going to be represented. Well, I just got a call asking for me to talk to, matter of fact, Joan Vaterbergen asked me to meet with someone and I'm sure Marilyn will meet with someone. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing you can do. I was learned from John Biggers, uh, my mentor, African-American artist, muralist, international. Um, uh, I learned from him that when you do something for a community, you turning it over to the community, that's why mm -hmm. you should have the community involved then you leave mm -hmm. and you know unless they invite you back to make a statement at a city council meeting or something like that uh or you know like um celebration life mural that we'll probably talk about where you have to just stand in front of the wall or mm -hmm. fight to the good fight but uh, well, yeah. i mean that's that's kind of yeah i'd love to talk about that because i mean with this Kmart thing like how people just don't know about it because it's like in this like dead end, like that really not very They made it the dead end. Yeah. So they made a dead community. Yeah. It mm -hmm. used to be the Nicollet Mall went from Richville. Yeah. All the way to downtown. Yeah. And there were storefronts, family businesses that thrived mm -hmm. all the way downtown. Mm -hmm. So you didn't have to ask where the shoemaker was, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, who, who, where the hardware stores were, who did make actual screens for your windows and who didn't who you know so all those things were there i remember being on the bus with us and there was this old lady that was on the bus she probably was about in her 80s and she started to freak out when she got to where kmart before kmart you turned because she was looking trying to figure out where her stores were yeah she you, you obliterated her her whole childhood knowledge yeah and you can't do that with putting up a new mural but you might can leave something yeah. A semblance of something. Well, that's super subversive. Like, I, that's what I love about that piece. Like, for me, that's, like, what the opportunity that we have, right? I mean, I, I just wonder where that community buy-in is with that mural, though. You know, like, how, how, well, can, how can that, you know, if it isn't seen, then how can it, that you know, community, hold, The yeah. community has changed so many times. There was a time when it was left alone. Then it got graffitied. Mm -hmm. Then they asked us to come and touch it up. And we're like, eh, not just touch it up, but we need to have a venue or something uh, to talk to the people in the community. Well, no, we're not going to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. well, okay. And so we did it. We sat around and, you know, kids would mm -hmm. come and say, hey, you know, you want to paint on something? Mm -hmm. Just some small area. You know, the thing is huge, so you can't yeah. get them on scaffolding. But you wanted to get them to take ownership again. Mm -hmm. Met a lot of artists and, you know, and well, they talk up the neighborhood to, this was really for us. Yeah. And see the businessman is shutting the door to the yeah. community and then here's this big, yeah here's this uh a battleship now it was one of many designs that we did and we looked at his and we just took ours just let's do this one <laughs> <laughs> and they looked well, at it and they saw the businessman the suit and everything and they were like this is great no i i'm like when i talk to you it it's just it's amazing because like I know these other artists that were involved at the time, you know, you have Say2 and you have Marilyn, you know, Marilyn yeah. Lindstrom, and it's like, those people, like, have affected the Twin City scene, but I just wonder what kind of environment invited that. Well, Model Cities was, uh, I mean, that was the thing to create pilot programs. Like, a Pilot City had a uh, regional health center. Mm -hmm. That was created through that. There's a Model Cities has a dental program in mm -hmm. uh, St. Paul. There are very few of these left uh -huh. because as soon as they could not have to serve the people that they have to serve, which I'm going, what? But yeah. that's a good thing. Uh -huh. But we can put our money up, put our money elsewhere. Why? 
-hmm. You know, why don't you do it here so you have healthy people, you know, a healthy kids, healthy community, strong community leaders. They're not going to be thugs that are super intelligent, even though thugs are usually super intelligent. Mm -hmm. They're going to be other people, you know. It's like, you know, they're going to be people that might want to build a community, might want to, you know, start a business or, uh, you know, an IT firm. And, but if you don't give, you don't take care of their health and their education, you know, so all these things are wrapped into uh, a thing of doing public art to let kids know it's safe in that community. Mm -hmm. And there's something going on with that mural that... So it's more smart. of a PSA kind of thing. Like it's it was a, like a... Like the clinic was like felt like they needed to give back. Was am I getting well? No, they, like they, yeah, they they did give back. They that they. Wow. Yeah, I mean, the people that created these things and then got Model City's money, mm -hmm. they were probably some of your radicals at the time. Yeah, you know, and they were like, "Well, we need this," and well, you know, I mean, with the, there was the African American Cultural Center. Yeah, that was a Model Cities program mm. that brought say two again myself, uh, a whole lot of artists and musicians that had. Music classes, dance classes, a dance uh, class uh, theater with the fully glass, fully dance floors, the same as that, like the one that was at, uh, that's at uh, Where the, the Cole Center. Now? They tore it down. Shit. The, the whole thing that we couldn't figure out is how to keep these things mm. until we realize we mm. have to own these things to keep these things. Mm. If you don't own it, yeah, no, you that, don't have it. That's interesting because I mean Roger and I. Um, in the conversation previous for Roger Cummings and I, like we had the interview, you can check out it in the first part of it, but like we talked about that, that artist co-op or an artist development agency in itself, you know, because I, I mean, this is, this is where the point where I think it's really interesting because you have all this history. It starts off with like doing art in public places, but then it evolves into this, maybe the placemaking bit where it's not so much about the art, it's about the artist and like, I just almost want to revert back to like art, ha art or objects having power, and we can do that. I well, mean, we can't only be studio based, right? But like, I didn't uh, create, I didn't create placemaking. I created people, places, and connections with intermedia arts in '88. Yeah, I know, 86. I know, I know this, but so it's evolved. It's, yeah, it's, it evolves to where people start to get. You can see a group of people doing a dance, and the next group of people do the dance, but they simplify it. The next group do a different dance, and they wear certain cl clothing. And then all of a sudden, people think of that as this most recent dance is the old dance, and they, they create it, and it's just sort of a, a, a package thing. I don't know, you know, because everybody's trying to do something to make communities better mm -hmm. and use art as a vehicle for change. But art as a vehicle for change, is the word oxymoron? Mm -hmm. Or... Mm -hmm. But because art is change, mm. but because people are so trained on the English language to giving them directive, mm. that you have to say art is the vehicle of change, but you really have to talk about who's driving the vehicle. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's not the organization that's doing the activity, it's that community. Mm. And if you don't let them know that, mm. they, they kind of welcome you in to see what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. But you really need to know that you have to represent them well or they don't want to see it again. Mm. You know, and it seemed like for a while everything that we were doing, because uh, I, you know, I did a thing where I hired five, six artists to go down the Lake Street corridor in every community that was connected because of the Midtown Greenway. Mm-hmm. That Greenway became an important thing, and Midtown Greenway Association, they were coalition. Coalition. Yeah. They were doing things to try to make people know that something's coming up here, mm -hmm. and we were saying, well, let us tell the people by having artists in those communities working and creating mm -hmm. uh, artwork that addresses what they think about the community, how they think the community is, and mm -hmm. reflecting past, present, and future thing, and maybe getting some of those people to buy some of those properties before the corporations bought them all. Mm -hmm. Well, we by the time we we're breathing that, the corporations are buying everything on that greenway. Hmm. That was work with Wendy Knox as well, right? Like through People's Places Connections? Uh, not Wendy Knox. Not, not Wendy Knox, Wendy Morris. Morris, yeah. yeah. Wendy was one of my first people that worked. First, I did an exhibition, so Wendy wasn't part of that. Uh -huh. But Wendy is now uh, connected to what came after that. Yeah. My problem with a lot of things that I create is I don't want to stay there and be a statue in the park. Mm. I'm, 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 I, you know, 
you know, you got to get somebody like Wendy to keep things moving, keep things moving, yeah. and get yeah. people using well, it. She's a performer, ways. so it's, yeah. yeah, it's not so just So Wendy was object. one of the artists yeah. for that, and Marilyn Linston was one of the artists for that. Uh, Peyton was one of the artists mm -hmm. for that. Uh, Peyton Russell. Yeah, Peyton Russell. Oh, man, there was this amazing performance artist. She was part of Chicks on Sticks. Oh, Oh, I can't think of names anymore. If people research any of that stuff, they'll they'll find that oh that person's connected to that person, that well, person connected to that person. Well, you know. So there's like this moment where it is very public, and so like the government, or like the people that are doing the Greenway, realize that there's an opportunity that lies within working with artists. But now it's evolved into a private development company, and is that relationship the same? You know what well, I'm, I mean? We've worked on projects together where it's, you know. Uh, like the South Loop thing, it's like, that's a city entity thing, but it, yet it's got a lot of private development um, wrapped up in it. So does, right. like, how does that change it? And does it change what is made? And it, does it change the power of of what the art is? It, it, it changed, you know, the artist then is working for someone, mm -hmm. uh, which is always true. Mm -hmm. But the, the entity that uh, hires you can dictate and does dictate what they want to get out of it. Mm -hmm. But what they want to get out of is to have people know that they're going to do something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes feed in, give you your feedback so they can create something exciting, or they're letting you know that so you can get out of the way. Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful. Uh, artists have to be careful because, you know, you, you all of a sudden you're the scout mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. there's no backup when you get in. And they said, isn't that the cat that went and scouted that thing? Yeah. Uh, he's not getting out of here. Yeah. You know, or we're not going to pay any attention to me. You you lose your clout. It's better to have clout than to be a scout. I like that. Anyway, <laughs> I have to use that somewhere else. Well, point. somebody else can use that one. <laughs> See, I think that we're working in right now. It's very different than the environment that you were working in in the '70s into the '80s and '90s. And like, I mean, it, I, each one was hard. Yeah, each one was hard. The '70s was easy. You know, there was just a whole lot of problems. But there's a problem now. <laughs> There's a problem now. Yeah. I mean, kids getting shot, black kids getting shot, and you know, uh, yeah. uh, you know, uh, communities just people, you know, walking into them and just saying, you know, get out, you know. But uh, back to the ownership thing is like, it's great that developers come and develop, yeah. you know, communities. But if developers are really smart, mm -hmm. they would find a part of that community, then look at the history of that community and see what's thriving. And maybe put a little water and sunshine in there, and then help uh, uh, partial ownership, like land trust that has people come in. But even better than land trust, when uh, um, houses a home was a thing where you know you could live there for two years paying rent, but part of that money goes to the ownership of it, mm -hmm. and then you take over that. You you have a record of a good history, credit history, and then you can just buy into that house. I, I don't think there's anything to bitch about, really, in the Twin Cities. There's a, like, I mean, there is. There, there is. is. There's no, some there. things, but, like, there's so many good things, like the City of Lakes Community Land Trust. It's, like, there's, like, so many good developers that, you know, it is a good place to but experiment where, with this. where artists play into that, some of it is just beautification. There's nothing wrong with that. Mm, okay. There's a role for artists just to mm. keep the heartbeat going. To work with people and they think that, you know, somebody will say, hey, you know, there's these flowers that grow up in these alleys every year, but we don't know who planted them. Mm. And then you do a mural and all of a sudden those flowers are the biggest object in those murals mm. that have to do with that community. Mm. So it pays homage to whoever this new Johnny Appleseed or old Johnny Appleseed was. Mm -hmm. It pays homage to things that were important, but we don't remember them. And if we don't remember them, we plow it down. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a culture that plows down anything to build anything, even their own things, you know? Yeah, to I mean, I, th that's the thing that is, I, the beautification, the role of the artist, like, we're somewhat selfish and we paint in our studio, right? But there's also a part of us that wants to be out there and yeah. it, have it informed. But, like, I was having a discussion with Cornerstone Group and Forecast about what is a commission and what is, um, you know, engagement, and they're kind of, together in these things now and, and it's then, like yeah then, it's, it's, it's a hard it's a hard gray area that is think, like what do you i think yeah. an engagement is using art to see what's happening and what should happen i mm -hmm. think commission is then hiring somebody to do the work of those things that are happening mm -hmm. where you might involve a lot of the community but it's no longer it's taking all of that research material mm -hmm. and getting a, a, all these genius artists to mm -hmm. create something that 
you know, whistles every time this 27th person walks by and then some lights come on and then all of a sudden you see are shadows you, are that come on. Are you using that? No. Okay. Not yet. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not yet. <laughs> but now that I mentioned it, I might have to do that, you know. Why not, you know? So yeah. it's, it's like there's so much, but I'm, I'm, I'm afraid of placement, placemaking now because there were so many people that just jumped on it because that was a new way to get funded. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I don't worry about the Twin Cities so much because there's a certain level of integrity that you have to yeah. have coming here. And there might be one or two whacked things that happen. Yeah. But then the next person sees that whack thing and says, that wasn't a bad idea. Mm. Maybe we should just talk to this person. You know, I wanted to do this thing in communities when I got a leadership and neighborhood grant through St. Paul companies. Mm -hmm. Um, and it had a slew of amazing, great mind people that got those. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do this thing called Chip Off the Old Block, mm -hmm. which was to go around the neighborhood, see the great things we were doing, who was raising the best flowers, mm -hmm. who, you know, had musical concerts in their backyard all the time and would teach kids music in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, talking to this lady, she says, well, I just sing to my flowers. And I said, well, could you sing for me for a second? And she said... You're not a flower. And I'm like, point taken. Can, <laughs> can you sing the flowers? And then she was like almost operatic. Uh -huh. And I'm like, oh my God. And yeah. so I wanted to do this thing where you would go to these different places and take those people that are not unsung heroes, but the everyday person that has a talent mm. and humbly ask them if they would mind sharing once a week, once a month some kind of thing where we come and gather and food and then share some of those things so that neighbors and kids could all of a sudden see, oh, I thought that person was a jerk. He's a really cool guy. Or <laughs> he built that, you know? Yeah. You know, because there, there's all these people doing all these amazing things. But then next would be collaboration. But you don't force that. Yeah. You let it happen, but you document it. Mm. And then you show them later and they're like, oh, no, we just got together on the weekends and built boats. Mm. Uh-huh. You know? And yeah. then sometimes you can make it an industry mm -hmm. or an institution, but sometimes you just leave it alone to plant another seed where I don't have to be there mm -hmm. to say, hey, you need to do another one. You yeah. Know? Or a quieter structure sometimes that just comes and say, hey, you need anything? Mm -hmm. You know? And mm -hmm. they're like, nope. Hey, you need anything? We got money? No, we got money. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, hey, but do you know those video guys you had? Can you get those guys back here? And But before you have them shooting video, can you? My son's interested in video. Mm -hmm. They start turning it around so that that stuff starts happening there. It's a, you know, evolution is an interesting thing, you know, and things go up. And they go down. Well, I mean, I, I think that that is important in talking to you is just like the time, you know, because for me, there's like in development, it's all about time as well. You know, it's like mm -hmm. you have these temporal moments that are like present themselves like a vacant lot like that I'm working with. It's mm -hmm. only going to be there maybe for two years. Maybe I'll sit vacant for five years or maybe I'll just get developed like Joan uh, Voderbruggen has to deal with that with Made Here. You know, it's like these temporal moments are important as well, but you've had murals up like for a long time. So I mean, I've yeah. had a lot torn down. Pilot City was torn down. You know, uh, uh, Java Restaurant was just a restaurant on Six and Hennepin. Mm -hmm. But the guy told me he didn't like me at first, and I'm like, yeah, but you need me. Yeah. And uh, it was a uh, one of those Fanny Farmer glass, white glass things, and all mm -hmm. that. And he was on this corner, and uh, I asked him if I could do a mural. I mean, it was funny because it wasn't funny. I, I understand his system. He said, well, come with me. And I'm like, okay. And then we went into the freezer. I'm like, oh, my God. I think I'm going to die. <laughs> Why am I in the freezer? Then he brings out a box and it has money in it. And he says, how much? <laughs> All of that. And I'm thinking, yeah. <laughs> but I'm thinking, I don't know what to say because now I know where the money is. If it goes missing, I'm a cat who comes to it. But, you know, and I think it was just like, God, at that time, like, Five thousand dollars was just a huge amount of money in nineteen seventy nine, maybe. Uh, and he was just like, ch -ch -ch counting out the twenties. I'm like, what in the world is this? Mm -hmm. But I was able to do that. It wasn't. He was from. Oh man, I can't remember where it was from. But it, I, the the image I found was the Queen of Kuwait. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. sitting on a chair. She's bigger. She's getting her hair braided mm-hmm. by two servants mm-hmm. that have their hair braided, mm-hmm. and one of well, one is braiding her hair, and one is serving her food, pouring mm-hmm. pouring tea. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll call it a tea, but it could have been whatever. And people were like, "Well, why that one?" I'm like, "I think it was a, a monotone kind mm-hmm. of thing, so you could see it looked like it was being carved out of the wall. Oh, wow. Just the tones, the color that I use. Yeah. And because I see black and white better than I see color. Yeah. And so, one day I'm walking by. There's two young African American girls there with beautiful braided hair, just posing and doing this, you know. And I'm like, chuk, 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 chuk. and I said, <laughs> "I'm sorry, can I take your picture?" She said, "Yeah, no." Pointing at, mm-hmm. I'm like, the princesses see the queen. Mm-hmm. I was like, my job is done here. Make some connection. You know, yeah. but that's how I learned, you know, is by not just doing it and leaving, but coming back and watching and seeing what's going yeah. on and stuff like that. And, you know, it's uh, it's hard to see when, when something gets torn down, but it, it that happens in anything, you know. Mm-hmm. A tree, you plant the seed, you watch it grow, it, bears, it grows, it grows, it grows, it bears fruit. Some people didn't even know it was going to bear fruit. You eat the fruit, and then after a while, something happens, and then it dies, and you make a chair out of it. Mm-hmm. So it has all of these lives that it can give. Yeah. We should be doing that with our artwork, too. Mm-hmm. You know, if, it, if it's possible, if an artwork can be taken down, and in the development of it, you create a will mm-hmm. for the artwork. Yeah. And that it goes to another social service organization. It becomes the wall of, embedded in a wall, you know. Mm-hmm. Some kind of thing where, or pieces of it mm-hmm. are cut up and made into other things that people can remember the moment. That's what's going to happen with these. Actually. Yeah, I think that's I'm, great. I, yeah, I've been thinking about the life of these. I mean, they're going to be outside, so they're going to be weathered and beaten. But I think I'm going to turn it into a table, which we'll use for convening like in times like this so i mean i guess i guess one thing that i just wanted to part with is like um i've learned a lot just sitting around with you like shooting the shit all that's the time I'm crazy yeah <laughs> well i mean it, it it's it's fantastic i always learn some everything like a lot of things from you but like so is there advice that are for a young artist that's work that that are working in the public realm three yeah, go ahead three things go ahead nothing beats a failure but a try if you don't ask you're not going to get it so, you know, you got to get it and then try it, you know, and yeah. people, people, if you ask and you're respectful and you've done some research, mm-hmm. you know, if you go into a corporation, just call and say, I'm interested in this company and just get their annual report. Mm-hmm. You may not be asked anything about it, but you know about it. Your attitude mm-hmm. is different. Yeah. You know, um, you can't make a diamond without pressure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Superman showed me that. Sweets of coal. <laughs> and boom, and, you know, then yeah. I found out it was scientifically true. Yeah. And you can't make a pearl without agitation. Hmm. So if you're going to do something, go ahead and get your treasure chest done. Hmm. And then all the knowledge from all those things will roll into the next thing. Hmm. Um, you know, I've been comfortable at times. I've been broke at times. But I've never been really broke. I've been super rich because I have all this artwork. All of these memories, mm-hmm. past, present, and future. Because yeah. I'm a time traveler. <laughs> The only way you can do art is to see into the future and then bring it back and see how it weaves together. I think that's a truly examined life. I mean, I, I appreciate that, and I, it's a road I hope to follow. Um, thanks. Well, I'm, 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 I'm trying to keep up with you. Man. Yeah. <laughs>